Okay, 603 meetings officially started. Um, Gay, I see that you're here. Welcome. Um, you. Do you have any public input at this time? This is when um, you'd be able to um, kind of express any um, any concerns or give an opinion on anything. So if you want to go for it now or you just to observe. Oh, um, are you talking to me? Um, I thought that I would be contributing throughout the meeting. Am I only doing it one time, Paul? Or? If you want to talk about the plenty of things that you were interested in, yeah, this would be a good time to do it. Oh, this is the time to do it. Okay. Something under item five on the agenda. So right. So now is the time you want to do it. Okay. Right. Right. Normally, when we have um, liaisons, they speak in the beginning as a oh. um, as a public input. Oh, okay, that's different from when we used to do that. Okay, I understand. Um, so what I would like to do is um, to propose and to discuss um, two sites for planting trees. Um, I would like to, and they're both on Richards Avenue in West Norwalk, mm -hmm. and they're both cemeteries. Um, they're both adjacent to St. John's, which I worked on uh, years ago. Um, one is uh, the Temple Israel Cemetery at 225 Richards Avenue, and the other one is 143 um, Richards Avenue and Cedar Street, exactly across from Norwalk Community College, which I'm sure you're very familiar with. <laughs> um, so the other, and that one is called the Temple Shalom Independent Hebrew Society. So I have contact information for both of them. I have certainly have not moved ahead. Wanted to get a refresher course on what we do. Um, do we have a, a standardized letter? We used to do something like that um, with the mission statement, what we want to do, planting it before I move ahead with the planting of the trees, just to see what the updated information is since I last worked on this. Yeah, um, sure. So, so um, you know, Gay, I actually remember um, I was at the... Um, um, the the program where the trees were planted at the cemetery it was a, a really fed I mean every time I drive to NCC I drive by them and I'm right. so happy that we had you know a, a, a part in putting those in um, so uh, Paul can you please email Gay the forms that we fill out um, it's a very short form that just is name um, location and um, Cindy put together this booklet with all of the trees that we um, um, suggest or, or offer people to choose from. Um, if you wanted to include a, a particular tree or two that you would like to see there, that's fine. Otherwise, you know, we have um, a, a tree extraordinaire people <laughs> like Rich on, right, on, right. on our team who can very easily determine what tree would, you know, have the greatest level of success and look best in these areas. Hi, mm -hmm. Peter. Um, Hi. And uh, and so uh, we take it from there. Um, after uh, liaisons turn in this form, it, it goes on a list. We have a lot of locations where we like to plant or we're trying to get trees into and Paul and some other folks go around and review the area, stake out the area, that kind of thing. The forms are a little different, Gay, than what we had before. They've been updated. Law offices chimed in a little on them and what they'd like okay. to see so we can provide those to you. And then the book, the volunteer book is the same book we've always been using. I'll send you the whole package. Okay, that would be great. And we have a, we now have, we've hired two people. I see two companies that do the watering. We didn't have that prior. So the watering is included in that and that it's complimentary. So these, and all that yeah, these are not companies that are hired just to do watering. They're companies that we have contracts with through the city. Homestead. And part of the deal, if you will, built into the cost of the tree is uh, several years of watering slash um, replacing the tree should it fail within a specific time frame. So we're not paying extra for it, but you know, nothing's free. I'm sure it's built in somehow. <laughs> right, right. I remember we were discussing that. That's terrific that we have that, that wonderful um, concept now. Okay. 
So, um, Paul, when you get the chance, I look forward to, to seeing it. Thank you. Yeah, we'll send it to Thank, you. Thank you. Okay, I move to um, approve the committee meeting minutes from the 23rd. Does anyone second that? Um, Rich, you're not, uh, you're muted, Rich. I have a question about that, the minutes. Oh, okay. Um, I, I think because we we tend to follow the rules, I think that you have to talk in that first um, three minute public input part. Okay, it's a typo. That's all. Fill it in there. Did you not find it? <laughs> <laughs> send me an email quick day <laughs> am i allowed to do that <laughs> these rules it's a typo we'll live it's a typo that's all we okay it's a typo it's cindy casuto and perhaps i'm I, i'm not i'm new to these people so it's casuto c-a-s-s-u-t-o or is it c-o-s-s-u-t-o i think so it's we, been a the entire last three years <laughs> which is the correct spelling cindy yo though actually it's going to be birdo very soon okay <laughs> i was going to say oh. it is already <laughs> okay well technically waiting for my new card yeah. <laughs> okay Good. do we have someone uh seconding the approval of the minutes i'm sure it's a beautiful june night we have lots of stuff we'd all like to be doing than sitting here it's I'm unmuted. I second the minutes. There you go. Now you're unmuted. Thank okay. you. Okay. Um, so we have a pretty extensive um, capital tree planting program. Um, we have planted uh, in the spring 294 trees. Um, I think we can all see the addresses here. It's certainly not necessary to go through each one of these uh, painstakingly individually, um, but you could see one of the things I noticed was that they're kind of spread um, somewhat throughout um, Norwalk with a concentration in kind of um, uh, east and west Norwalk. So, um, you know, maybe we want to kind of broaden our, our sweep a little bit. Um, but what I think more impressive or just as impressive as the 294 trees is that for our fiscal year 22-23, we've been able to get 524 trees into the ground. So I think that is uh, to be, um, you know, everyone needs to be commended on that because that's that's a that's a big deal. That's a big deal. Um, so Paul, did you have anything specific to add to that? Again, not going over each one of these addresses, but just yeah. if you wanted anything to add. No, uh, there are still a few that they're working to get in the ground now, but this is everything that's basically been ordered and planted to date. Like you said, fiscal year, it does, it's the 524, it's a record. Uh, and then I can talk in the next section about some balances and where we, what we spent and where we are headed for the rest of the uh, ARPA funding too. Okay, good. No, money, it's always good to know what we have. Um, and then that also helps us plan to kind of bolster that or offset some of what we need to offset with the grants. And um, just really quickly, um, that first bullet point um, for the deep urban forestry equity building through capacity grants was something that was earned um, with the city of Norwalk in collaboration with Norwalk Community College. And as Paul uh, listed here, it enabled us to plant over 30 trees at the Children's Learning Center. Um, we put in um, an evergreen type tree that was, you know, kind of packed closely. Some, you know, feel free to jump in and correct me if I'm wrong. I mean, I was there, but <laughs> it's, it's an, those are evergreens, right? There were a, um, when they weren't green giants, were they? What did we put there? No, uh, they were emerald green. The Are emerald greens. Um, and uh, what I think was great about the size of the tree we put in and the way they were planted 
is that um, they created an instant, instant difference, an instant barrier for those kids to have some privacy, some shade, some um, uh, barrier between them and the road. Um, the noise, the, um, you know, car emissions, yeah. the view of that junkyard or whatever that is across the street. So I think one of the things that was most gratifying about that particular grant that we wrote was that it was immediately impactful. And we had a phenomenal turnout from um, common council members, um, the mayor, the um, uh, Bob Duff was there. We had, um, you know, all the people from the housing authority and um, uh, all the kids from the learning center were there getting their hands dirty. And it was really a phenomenal program. So uh, Paul and I have some great pictures from that, that we can, um, we can share. Uh, because I think when you see those miniature humans, you know, in there tossing dirt around, it really just kind of brings it all, all to life. So, um, so I mean, like Paul said, it's a, um, it's a banner year, 524 trees is phenomenal. So um, we're all going to try to fill out those forms and submit some locations for more trees. I'm sure as we all drive around town, we can, you know, see locations that could use um, some greening and um, and we'll just fill those out and turn them into Paul. Paul will put them into a list. And once we get that list together, we'll discuss that as a group. Maybe we prioritize some of them depending on what kind of funds we have to put them in the ground. And then, you know, sometimes we have, you know, people like Jeff who are from, you know, uh, like the Tree Alliance and we can, you know, collaborate and maybe get even more trees in the ground. So, you know, it's it's um, putting that list together is is always our first priority and trying to figure out where we want, where we're all looking to put some trees, you know, and then going out to see whether these locations are realistic or not. Okay, so... That brings us to watering schedules. Um, did you need yes. to say anything specific about them, Paul? A couple of things that I just wanted to mention back to item C was the budget balances, just to give you guys an idea. Oh, I'm in sorry, fall, I skipped right over that. In the fall, when we planted 230 trees, we used about $180,000 of the ARPA money that we had, as well as some other initiatives and grants that we had. So that's 180. This spring now, we used about 200, $200,000, $400 of ARPA money in addition to some other funding that we had. That leaves us right now with ARPA money of $319,800 to be used by December 31st of 2024. So it leaves us three more planting cycles, fall 23, spring 24, fall 24. Which comes oh. out to about a hundred. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. Go ahead. It comes out to about one hundred and six thousand dollars a cycle. So the three nineteen eight, if you divide it by three, that leaves us one hundred and six thousand a cycle there. Plus, in addition, we still have money that we're working with uh, economic and community development through the Martin Luther King Initiative grant too. So, money wise, we're in good shape, and we have money to spend for the next year and a half to two years. So, Paul, what do we have then? We have 319.8 plus what? What is what is our bottom line? What do we have? Well, in, the, in the grant that we have to work with economic and community development for that DECB, Martin Luther King Drive Initiative Grant for Trees, mm -hmm. there's another 157000 in that too. So... And do we have anything that is also in addition to that in our budget, in our TAC budget, or that's what we're working with? Well, some of the ARPA funding was TAC budget. And then we've got a little bit of uh, capital budget money remaining there too, a couple thousand dollars. So, and what the city did, remember, we got ARPA funding for the capital budget funding replacement this year. So we don't have individual capital budget funds, we end up having ARPA funding. Okay, so 319 and 157 is about 476. So that's what you're saying we have, about 476. We have. 
And that 157, we've got to work with economic and community development and where we're going to put the trees for that. So they have input on that. But we have 319.8 of TAC DPW ARPA money left. Okay. Right now, there's money in a lot of different pools, and that's kind of why I'm breaking it out a little bit, just to kind of give people ideas. There's grant ones. There's other ones for uh, uh, the ARPA money that replaced capital budget funding. So just right. wanted to mention that to people. Okay, so so we should know that we're looking at approximately 476000 to plant over the next three seasons. Yes. December 2024. Okay, perfect. Thank you for that. Okay. Um, anything specific about the watering schedule? I mean, remember we said get, we weren't going to discuss the watering schedule unless there was a problem. Yeah, I'm going to get to that one in just a second, but I just want to mention to development of the fall and spring planting for people, just to give you an idea and some things that we got lined up already. The city is doing sidewalk projects and road paving projects, curbing projects. We've got several that are going on right now that would be fall planting over on Spring Hill Avenue, Senga, Morton Street, West Rocks Road. And then we've also got housing authority complexes to follow up on that we still have many more trees that we can put in uh, in the continuation of the work over at uh, uh, Colonial Village. Plus, we've got a couple of requests for one of the schools, too, that have come in. So I have that on the list already. In addition to whatever else the members can give us, as Erica said, it would be helpful. If you've got your list, please start sending them to me for planning for the fall. As far as what well, said, one question on those neighborhood improvement projects. Uh, trees are probably going in, but are we dealing with the soils that they're getting planted into? As often, you know, generally you just pop them in the ground, but if the scale is such that you can make sure the soil is good for those trees, we get a much better chance of them taking off. And that's typically. I told, I told both Minutemen and Olmstead if they see stuff that looks like there's an issue with the soils, let us know. And at times, Olmstead has done some soil testing just to check out on it and make sure. So, but if they've been letting me know and if they had to do amendments and things like that, then they've done that. Because often, I mean, often sometimes the contractor, they're throwing garbage in these tree pits. I'm asking them wherever we see them, if there's rocks and things like that, take all that stuff out and take it away with them. Don't put it back in the hole. We have the opportunity now to get good soil with these trees so they take off and they take less maintenance and they're not struggling. And they've got an interest in that too because they're responsible for them for the two years. Do you think, Peter, that there should be some soil prep involved in some of these places? Is that what you're thinking? I'm, I'm thinking that it's you're leaving it up to the landscape contractor when the GC needs to be part of the deal. Because mm -hmm. the contracts are very there expensive. Is no GC. Well, there is there? no GC. There is no GC, Peter. We're the, we're, the, we're, the, we're the owner. No, no, but I'm saying the, the guy doing the, the hardscape construction, the curbs, the, the roadway paving. Um, a lot of times earthwork yeah. is in their contract. Oh, I hear what you're saying. Yes, I, I hear what you're saying. Yeah, the GC doing all of that work. They're supposed to be putting the topsoil back in. We've got a lot stricter on it. We've had uh, some companies, which I'll uh, remain nameless, that have put stuff in as topsoil, and we've been rejecting it as of late and making them test it for DOT standards so that there's more organic material in it, and there's none of the uh, what I'll call bank run gravel as part of topsoil. Exactly. That's exactly what I'm asking, making sure that that's part of the, the bigger picture. Because so We do that on the paving end and the sidewalk project end of it, but also I've got Olmstead looking out to make sure that if there's any issues that they find, and also Minutemen, they let us know, and if we have to do amendments, then we look at that also. That's good, because I mean, it's insurance for long term. I mean, we make investments significantly, dollars for these trees. Yes. Paul, quick question. If um, these trees, some of the trees that you're talking about are part of a sidewalk project, would they fall under the MLK Economic Development Grant? Well, it all depends upon where it is. If the, like the one, for example, Spring Hill Avenue I just mentioned, that's not within that geographical area. Okay. But, all right. 
we can talk a little, yeah, a little more offline about it, just so I can understand without taking up everyone's time. The ones, the ones that I can see, basically with the pools of money, I'll try and put them into where they fit best, so that we're maximizing it. Maximize exactly, exactly. That was my only questions so that we could do that. Sure. Okay. I have a, a question, Paul. Sorry. No, go for it, Anthony. Uh, we do a lot of uh, planting as well, and we normally go with with all the work after the G, the, and they normally end up with backfilling with whatever they have on site, a processed rock. I know you just guys said that, but it's true. So you got to dig that out. I normally go three feet around if there's enough room in that area and, and dig it all out into the pit and bring an all new soil and fill it up, tamp it up and mulch around it. I hope they do that because if they don't, the trees were, are going to die, like done for. We're make, we, we make them do that. For example, if we've got a project where we're doing a whole new sidewalk and snow shop right. or topsoil and seeded, the contractor for that has to bring the topsoil in and they're responsible for that. But when Olmstead or Minutemen go to dig the hole for the tree, if right. they're finding stuff in there, they have to take that out. And they, I, I, they can put it on the truck and dispose of it. And then they'll right. bring topsoil in to put the tree in the ground. So, yes. Okay. Okay. Good. Other areas, if they can find it and it's good topsoil, then they'll just install it the way it is. Well, just, just Correct. Keep, in keep in mind a tree requires at least 1,400 cubic foot of soil. Yep. And that is not that is not five by five by five. So you know if we're doing snow shelves, the whole snow shelf should have good soil in it. I mean, it doesn't have to be great soil for all of it, but it, um, it has to be clean at least. So Anthony's point is well taken, given the scale of the production. Right. I don't know if um, everyone noticed Jeff's hand is up. Jeff, did you want to ask a question? <laughs> Uh, thanks. Uh, no, I just wanted to say we've had uh, from the Norwalk Tree Alliance, um, the town dig a couple of holes and to be, to Peter's point, they have provided clean topsoil for those holes. Um, that was new soil, um, but uh, it's a good point that Peter brings up just to stay vigilant on that. And if you're doing lo larger projects, maybe make sure that all the soil is instead of lo the local to the tree is good yep. soil. Yeah. Thank you. Good. We've gotten a lot Thank stricter you. with the projects for the topsoil, like I said, too. We're actually making the contractors get it tested to make sure it meets the spec for the gradation and the uh, amount of organics and everything in the topsoil, too. Awesome. Okay. Anything, again, specific for the watering schedule that we need to know about? No, I've uh, gotten them updated uh, schedules from both Olmstead and Minutemen. Uh, I had seen them out watering, and I did talk with both Olmstead and Minutemen about making sure that they look at stuff that's not only just what they put in the ground this year, but also what they've done in the past because they are responsible, and if it dies and it's from last year, they still own it. So just kind of driven that point home when I was on the uh, phone this morning with Minutemen about that too. Okay, so I mean, Olmstead, at least for me, uh, they owe me a, um, a gator bag. So I don't know, um, you know, if they're fulfilling all of their um, requirements for other people. Um, but I know that I have not seen them and they never put a gator bag back. They took it off the end of last season from my tree, but they never put it back on or else I would even just fill it up. So I um, they to need Gary. to bring that back. <laughs> I mentioned that to Gary. So he's supposed to, and I told him you either water truck or gator bag or one or the other. But the tree dies, they own it. I told him I said, you're gonna have to replace it. So well, we want to avoid that from happening and we exactly. just want to, you know, get some water to it. Okay, so I think that um that again, just, just to kind of reiterate going forward. We don't need to discuss a watering schedule unless there's actually a problem with it that you want to let us all know about. Since you are the contact person, you would know if there was an issue and then you could let us know. Is there any other business, guys? 
Jeff's yeah. usually listed on here, but um, if you didn't get back to Paul in time, maybe you're in other business. <laughs> uh, possibly. I just wanted to say I haven't uh, been here for two months, so I apologize for that. But um, I wanted to, on behalf of the NTA, thank the TAC and you, uh, Professor Kip, uh, for the recommendations going a while back for those uh, donated books to the elementary schools. So thank you all for that. That was really well received. And um, yeah, just keep, we're continuing on planting. Um, I don't have the exact numbers uh, in front of me, but uh, we're, we, I know we have done so many plantings recently uh, and just uh, a couple of milestones for the NTA um, in general. Uh, the tree farm at Fodor Farm um, had its uh, first oak tree that was homegrown, uh, planted in, on a property uh, in Norwalk. So I know that that was a vision of a lot of people before me. Um, and I just wanted to create a uh, notice for that. And I believe we have seven others um, leaving. So uh, it's it's coming to fruition, the vision that um, the tree, form, tree farm was formed for. Um, and uh, we're potentially in talks with uh, Corville to help us out in maintaining that and going forward. So um, just being stewards of the tree farm and creating. So we do a lot of our plantings with the NTA with Corville. So we tried to um, solidify that connection and bring it more local to us and to the Fodor farm, uh, tree farm. So I wanted to mention that and uh, yeah, we just keep going. So <laughs> yeah, no, that's um, great. Uh, this, no. So the Tree Alliance got another $3,000 grant today from the third taxi district too. That's correct. Yes, that's awesome news. So we want to thank the third taxing district for continuing that. Paul, um, do you have um, anyone who's going to be doing the um, GIS mapping this summer? Do you have someone some, it already? I've got someone down in IT that's a GIS intern that is not Why? solely dedicated for that, but can be used periodically if needed. But that is something that we're going to need to do if we have anyone that, that wants well, to volunteer. Well, I wouldn't say if needed. We have 524 trees. We That's just my point. Around. Exactly. We, we <laughs> do need it. We just have to find a body to do it. So then your answer is you don't have an intern. I have a semi-intern, I'll say, because they're not dedicated solely to that, but I do have someone that we can use here and there for it. Can you set up a schedule and maybe get some of the a couple of hundred of those trees in? In the I system. Yes. yes. The okay. goal is to try to get them all in because I don't want to, I don't want to fall behind with what we're doing because we're planting so many trees. I want to make sure that we can at least keep up with it. Well, that that's my point. That's why I'm bringing that up. Cause last summer I wrote a grant and we had somebody paid to do that. And she did a phenomenal job. She it's got us job. up to speed. You know, her name is Jessica guy. She got us completely up to speed and I don't want to lose the momentum. Job. I don't want I to. Wish we could have gotten her again. I know. Well, you know, life goes on, right? She's gonna. She applied to a four year, and she's um she's super busy, but um but we don't want to lose that momentum. And if you can grab that IT intern for even part of the time, let's do it. And um and then I can look for another grant to subsidize. But it's not going to be for this summer. I mean, it's almost July already. Yeah. I I mean, really, I, I know that the, a student or an intern like that would probably be in school in the fall, but it's something that even if it was an afternoon, a week or so, and we can knock out 10 or 15 trees a day, that that would be helpful, too, if that would work. Sure. So just let me know what the IT intern can do this summer, and then we'll figure out the fall. Okay. Awesome. All right. If there's no other business, I move to adjourn. Anybody second? Second. <laughs> second, Cindy thirds it. <laughs> All right, guys. Awesome meeting. Thanks for your time. Thank you. Um, Have if, a good night. Yeah, before you sign off, don't sign off, don't sign off. Um, I wanted to move to um to not have that July meeting. We have absolutely nothing going on at that point. We have no new anything. Um, and most of us are gonna be on vacation or should be. 
Um, and but then in August, we'll reconvene to um, talk about the fall plantings. So I don't know if I put that forward as a motion and someone on the board has to second it or how exactly that works. Yes, that would be July 25th. Yep, so the July 25th, uh, Tuesday, 6 p.m. meeting, I'm suggesting that we um, cancel as a group because we just don't have any new business at that time and anything we do have, we can discuss in August. I second, I'll be on my honeymoon. <laughs> and there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so um, so Delene, if you could write that into the minutes, this way people see that we'll be meeting in August. You got it. Awesome, guys. Thank you. Have a good night. Thank you. Have a good night. Good night. Good night. Good great honeymoon. Send those sheets out, and you have a great honeymoon. <laughs> uh, yeah. Thanks so much. Yeah. Bye, Bye, guys. Bye.